one of the other ones is called Mate to Manager. And um, that came about from particularly our outdoor staff who one day are friends with and working side by side at the kids' football match together. And then tomorrow they're, they're a leading hand or a supervisor having to you know deal with some of the, the challenges that comes with that. What that was, was really giving them the skills to confidently step into those roles and be able to deal with, you know, you were my friend yesterday and I still want to be your friend, but now I'm your leader. Um, and we thought we were just going to run that once. And it's so popular uh, that we run one to two cohorts a year. Welcome to the Manage Self Lead Others Leadership Podcast with Nina Sunday for experienced and aspiring people managers. This show will help you explore ways to become a more intentional leader. Each episode, host Nina Sunday speaks with some of the brightest business minds on the planet who share a passion to elevate and transform team culture. Workplace culture hides in plain sight. Is yours flourishing? Join the movement to make your workplace a better place to work. Are you ready? Because it's time to manage self, lead others. My guest today was listed in Human Resources Director Magazine's Best in HR list, where each year the magazine identifies individuals who led new initiatives in the HR space and advanced the standing of HR within their organisation. Amanda Daly is Head of People, Culture and Organisational Performance at Redland City Council, a local government organisation with over a thousand employees serving a community, community of over, over 150,000 people situated on the coast of the state of Queensland, Australia, about 35 kilometres south of Brisbane, the state capital. And as a side note, it's where I live, Brisbane is named as the site of the 2032 Summer Olympics. With a Bachelor of Commerce, Amanda Daly not only holds a yellow belt in Lean Six Sigma, but also is an accredited IECL coach accredited in DISC assessment and Myers-Briggs type indicator, human synergistics LSI and change style indicator. With a career in council spanning over 20 years, Amanda previously managed the award-winning contact centre at Redland City Council. Welcome Amanda Daly. Thank you very much for having me Nina. Oh it's my pleasure and how excited were you to to find out that you were uh, listed as uh, best in HR by Human Resources Director Magazine. That would have been pretty exciting with the you and the team. It was. I was very excited. I, I think even more so that some of my um, managers that report through to me actually nominated me. So I didn't know about the nomination until I had become the finalist, which was lovely. Oh, that is such a compliment and uh, it must make you feel very proud. So. It was. It was really and, nice. And it would have been well-deserved. And Winning awards is definitely part of your shtick, definitely <laughs> in your history, because uh, I believe you, uh, the team recently won a local government managers association award for excellence in teamwork. So tell us about that. We did. We did. Um, so going back three years ago, the corporate strategy and business transformation team weren't part of my portfolio. And uh, just as part of the executive uh, leadership team discussions, we were struggling through COVID. Um, it was starting to have an impact. Our prices were rising, but our revenue wasn't. Um, and I put a proposal through to the CEO for my people and culture team to assist the other team in doing some light touch service reviews because, you know, we're out and about in the organisation a lot and you hear that people have the ideas on how to save money and be more efficient, but it doesn't necessarily go up the chain. So um, the pitch to the CEO was to, to run these in a, a really short space of time to make as big an impact as we could with the problem we were trying to solve. And uh, I worked with that team and, uh, and actually facilitated a lot of those workshops. During that time, the team then actually came over into my remit and uh, it meant I got to see the the whole story go from concept through to savings. So we identified about 10 million plus in savings and we've actually reached that, not necessarily banked the savings back, but either cost avoidance or redirected some of the funds 
or um, in, into other initiatives, or we've actually redirected them to, to other um, costs that council had. Um, so the team were amazing, but it really was the, the people on the ground that had these wonderful ideas that we just worked through a process. So 600 plus ideas, and uh, we took 80 and, you know, ran with those, you know, things like fleet optimization. We funded um, drone trials for mosquito management, um, all sorts of weird and wonderful things, but it's been a really great process. So this was uh, going out to all the uh, employees and asking them what are their ideas uh, to improve, save money, yep. uh, do more with less, that sort of thing. And that's a really excellent idea. And what strikes me too, Amanda, is you gave it an interesting title, Light Touch Service Review, rather than Service Review, which is quite yes. boring. Yes. And, and Light Touch. And what, what did that suggest? So it really was it's going to be 80% of what a service re review would be. We're not going to get stuck on the, you know, on the theory of it and, and have it perfect. We're very quickly and swiftly going to work through the organisation. We're going to use a simple tool. We were looking for simple things. Is there a better provider of our steel cap boots um, or a more efficient process or a credit card process for, you know, going to Bunnings as opposed to using invoicing? And I like how you name things like you've got the my say uh employee engagement survey can you tell us about that because it's my say yeah but we want people just to have their say um so we um we're in the top quartile for public service um benchmarking which is fantastic yes um of course covid's been hard and i think you know we'll all struggle a little bit when we do that post covid um survey but it really um goes down to team level so when we first did these surveys probably you know 6 7 years ago we would have one or two things that the whole organization needed to work on um as we've matured we've seen we actually don't have a consistent theme we have specific teams that need different things and my team then go in and tailor you know what is it about you know the issues in this team that specifically need attention and what can we do so a bit more bespoke and a bit more ownership for the managers and leaders as well um, but it, it's been a really good tool for us um, to hear from everyone you know 1100 people is a lot of people to, to get feedback from I think we had a 90% response rate. And yeah. there's an uh, another uh, program that you've given a name, you've called it EVP for short, Employee Value Proposition. What makes it unique? Oh, look, it was one of the projects that I have just loved um, being a part of. Um, we uh, partnered with Employer Branding Australia to do our Employee Value Proposition. We went out across the organisation and asked them what was so great about working for Redland City Council. Um, and we also decided that we would call, you know, the elephant in the room, which, you know, lo local government is a big is a big beast. And, you know, there are some things that, you know, we can't do that private enterprise can do. So it was really about engaging the people, understanding what they loved about Redlands, telling their stories, having them on video, having them, you know, have stories on our internet, intranet. Um, and it was amazing to watch why people loved our organisation. And that's where that special place term came from. Lots of people used it. Um, I would say, I, I've obviously done this before, but uh, and we use the same company for our values. This is the first time I've really felt like it's the employee voice. Isn't that wonderful? That's yeah. Right. Now, it's interesting that you instigated a refresh of the values in 2020. And I mean, you've been with this uh, organisation for around 20 years. So yeah. you knew what the old values were. Yeah. Why did you feel that there was a need for a refresh? Look, I think the, the previous values were right for the time, um, but we were embarking on a bit of a cultural journey um, and we, we really wanted the voice of the employee to be at the forefront of what we did with the customer, with our, our um, community, with um, our internal people. And they just started to not resonate as much, you know, as 
as we were changing as an organisation, as new people were coming in, our CEO um, is very supportive um, of our people, which obviously is a, a big win for a people and culture uh, leader. And he was very much a sponsor and behind that EVP and the values. Yes. And again, was very happy for our employees to actually craft those values. And there was a bit of back and forth, you know, we we're obviously trying to make it's snappy and for people to remember it. Um, but at the heart of it, you know, that's what our employees came up with, which was fantastic. Oh, yes. Yeah. See, this is it. You you got, got people to co-create the values themselves. Yeah. So they had skin in the game. They did. And therefore they, did. They, they then wanted to take it on board. And it's things like one team, yeah. which is the you won the prize for excellence in teamwork. Yeah. So yeah. that's definitely coming through. And, of course, listen and be heard. Yeah. I mean, that's so important. Uh, for, uh, uh, any manager leading a team has to go, go to their team with questions, yeah. not just with the answers, yeah. and listen to what the what people are, are telling them. Absolutely. And you've got some little dot points around EVP, which is, um, uh, you know, achieve for the community and your career. So it's about yeah. giving people a sense of meaning that what they do matters. Yes. And and for us, it was, you know, not just what council can do for you, but what you can do for yourself with the opportunities that are here. So, you know, some people don't want a career, they're quite happy um, to be in a specific role, others do. And we really wanted to show people, you know, our uniqueness is that you actually do see on the ground the work we do for the community, which is fabulous. You know, at a local government level, um, you're, you're the closest to the customer. And we really wanted people to, you know, that, that's what they were connecting with when we were doing the EVP. So when we looked at, you know, all the specific stories, it, it, it was really important that people could see, they could connect with the customer if that was their driver. But also, I mean, so many different jobs. In, I mean, I've had different careers in this one organisation. You know, we manage animal shelters, water treatment plants, we have customer service, um, you know, libraries, uh, performing arts centres. We do so many different things. So there is a lot of opportunity if, if you are interested in it. And it's what we can do for you and what you can do for yourself was the real balance there. Yes. One of the things in EVP is to experience variety and grow as a result. And what you've just pointed out is that it's it, people aren't expected to stay in their lane. If yeah. they want uh, to grow and uh, maybe do, I, I don't know, is job rotation yeah. a bit strong, too strong a description? No, we do a lot of it here, secondments and higher duties. Um, mm. It's a real opportunity and, you know, particularly in the environment we're all in at the moment where we've got these vacancies, you know, people who may not have thought to put their hand up or had, you know, didn't have all of the skills for the roles are getting more and more opportunities to try, you know, different things. And it's actually how I ended up in people and culture. I was actually the customer service manager um, and I was interested in doing something different. And I came over here for some project work and um, never left, ended up being the people and over a period of time, uh, the people and culture leader, I obviously was studying at uni at the time, but it was that secondment opportunity that really um, pivoted my whole career. Well, both the secondment and also I see you haven't been uh, sitting still. You obviously uh, reflect lifelong learning with, you know, taking on board, you know, accreditations in DISC and Myers-Briggs and, um, and, and certainly the uh, coaching qualification because the IECL, what's that, Institute for Executive Coaching and Leadership, yeah. that's a high calibre. Uh, coaching qualification you have to put in a lot of hours to get yes that yes a lot of testing <laughs> yeah. and, and and how many of your managers actually see that their role is sometimes as a coach yeah, well, we we actually have a coaching bench here. And um, when we did the IECL, it was for some of our team to become accredited and be coaches. But also we invited leaders in the organisation to be part of our coaching bench and we would pay for their accreditation. Um, so it's been fabulous. And we have a mentoring program, but also the formal coaching program. And it was really good that it wasn't just people and culture. It was actually people across the organisation that were admired for their leadership or 
their technical abilities that were now part of this coaching bench and, and fully accredited. And, and part of that, um, Nina, I think for local government is we don't have the biggest of budgets for, um, you know, things like learning and development, but we know they're so important. So yes. a lot of these things we get accredited in ourselves um, and roll them out across the organisation with some help externally, particularly for, for the higher levels. Um, but the coaching mindset really changed our organisation many years ago when we implemented um, some of that where we were really reinvesting back into up and coming, you know, leaders and, and professionals in our business, uh, which was just an added bonus for them that they got that opportunity here. Yes. And once again, you, you've got a name for uh, the Strong Teams program. Yeah. Tell us about the Strong Teams program. Yeah, look, that um, is facilitated by someone in, in my team who's an org psych, um, Kerry. One of the other ones is called Mate to Manager. And um, that came about from particularly our outdoor staff who one day are friends with and working side by side at the kids' football match together. And then tomorrow they're, they're a leading hand or a supervisor having to, you know, deal with some of the, the challenges that comes with that. What that was was really giving them the skills to confidently step into those roles and be able to deal with, you know, you were my friend yesterday and I still want to be your friend, but now I'm your leader. Um, and we thought we were just going to run that once. And it's so popular uh, that we run one to two cohorts a year. We usually have our general manager of infrastructure and operations sponsoring it, opening it, you know, um, giving advice, you know, where required. And we're actually seeing um, some of those, you know, people that have been through the program start to get those higher duties opportunities because they've been, been skilled, which is been fabulous. And you know what? It's the elephant in the room when it comes to leadership and people being promoted from being an individual contributor to being the, uh, a, a new yes. supervisor or team leader yep. is that sometimes holds people back. Yeah, but I won't be able to be mates with my mates. Yes. You know, so don't want it. you're yeah. addressing that whole issue and I think that's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, um, it was targeted more to our outdoor workforce and then it really became quite popular. And last year we um, did one with all of our admin officers who were aspiring to, to move up. And I actually sponsored um, that one myself. And some of the stories of the, you know, the conversations they were never going to have, but did have, or jumping in on a team meeting when they're, they're not in the hierarchy of leadership, they're, you know, the administration officer, but having that confidence to say, hey, I think we could deal with this matter differently. It, just the stories were amazing. Um, so it's been a, another successful program that I can't take the credit for. It's been my team that have created that and, and done a wonderful job. Well, you've got the humility of the truly great, Amanda, by giving credit to others, but I'm no doubt you're responsible for ins inspira inspiring it, no doubt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Over the last decade, there's been a shift from human resources uh, or HR manager to leader of people and culture, which does capture uh, pe people's hearts and minds. So yeah. uh, have you been responsible for that shift within your organisation or is it more of a just a, a trend uh, in, in the HR world? It definitely is a trend in the HR world where human resources really was that administrative personnel management um, of, you know, payroll and recruitment and checklists and whatnot. But we um, obviously wanted to become a more contemporary, you know, people and culture team. And I think the title really gives um, people that understanding and connection to we are about the people. We are here to actually help our organisation serve our community and what do they need as opposed to we are here to do HR, you know, type functions. And we've had a huge shift over time, particularly in that leadership development space. Um, and that's something I'm really proud of. Again, a great team that, you know, have worked on that over the years. And um, our current CEO, who's been here for five years, actually said that's what attracted him to Redland City Council was the focus and commitment to, to leadership development. And, and I think that's been that shift from, from traditional. 
one of the things we did have to do, which you, you would have seen, um, Nina, is uh, update our human resource information system as part of that. And I tell you what, if that's not a project that nearly tips you over the edge, I don't know what is. I, I've spoken to many a HR um, professional who have been involved in the, those projects and they are quite difficult, but it was moving our system from a payroll and a, a checklist recruitment and learning system through to the contemporary offerings around onboarding, offboarding, using that rich data to, you know, inform future programs, talent management that used to be on these big spreadsheets, um, so it just became too difficult. So that was part of our modernisation um, and transition as well. Mm, big job uh, yes. <laughs> and obviously well executed. On the website, you talk about Redland being, or the Redland area area uh, being a Kwandamuka country. So do you do anything uh, to uh, involve traditional owners? Yeah, look, it's a really proud history that we have on, on Redlands Coast. Um, and my team personally actually engage with um, Kayak, uh, the Kwandamuka Corporation, on some of the, the training and development. So we put all of our employees through what we call the Kwandamuka Day, which is going over to Stradbroke Island and uh, meeting with um, Kwandamuka people and really understanding the culture and the heritage. And uh, we expanded that, I think, last year and actually do a, a yarning circle with some of the elders as well to understand the stories um, that, you know, things you don't necessarily learn at school um, but it's been fabulous to see our employees go over to Stradbroke Island and immerse themselves in in the culture um, and I think there's a, a lot more to come in terms of you know Redlands Coast and our rich um, cultural heritage as we develop things like the Birkdale Precinct where our Olympic um, venue is going to be you know there'll be a lot of Kwandamuka um, information and learnings as part of, of that precinct. So very exciting, but my team, yeah, very, very much for a number of years have, have worked um, with our Kwandamuka people. Oh, that, that's really interesting to hear. Yeah. And just for anyone outside of Australia, uh, we've got a few Australianisms in there. When, when we talk about a story, we call it a yarn, telling a yarn. Amanda, tell us about the Wellbeing Through Adventure Initiative. <laughs> Yeah, so um, this has been fabulous. So, you know, the year before last, we did a big review of our, you know, safety. It's We obviously have some very high risk um, activities that we undertake, but a lot of um, the psychosocial um, uh, issues as well with the front facing customers and the demand. So we really, um, we did a refresh of, you know, what our offerings are. We did a Black Dog Institute um, survey tool to see where we sit in terms of the mental health and wellbeing space. And that really gave us the direction to say, we need to be doing more on certain areas. So the Wellbeing Through Adventure was about having destinations over the year where people could opt in or opt out because it's not for everyone, um, every single, you know, program that we, we run. We, the one-size-fits-all doesn't work. So we had things like Darius Boyd come into our, our depot area and talk about mental health and how important it is to, you know, actually talk about it. We did, um, you know, mindfulness walks through our beautiful Indigiscape Centre um, for those across, you know, the world. There's koalas there so it's a very relaxing beautiful you know place for a before work walk um, we you know had different testing in terms of um, you know health testing and nutritionists come in and it really brought people together from different teams as well as teaching them about their own mental health and well-being so it's kind of a twofold um, benefit but we had some uh, great feedback and uh, now we've got to make it even better for, for this year. Right. That's fantastic. I noticed that you're accredited in both DISC and Myers-Briggs and both have their uh, attractions and 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 I'm uh, a brain power training uh, has trainers who are accredited in, in both as well. Yeah. Um, to what extent do, do when... Do you uh, actually train the staff in either of those uh, uh, profiles? And to what extent does that then become part of the conversation so that people understand when you give somebody a task, they'll execute it a little bit according to their preference. So uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah. So, um, you know, we've had a number of people here accredited in Myers-Briggs and DISC. Um, I find Myers-Briggs... Um, 
it is really good for teams where it's not confrontational. You know, it's your inborn preferences. It's not about your skill level. It's really, you know, why am I the way I am or respond to things the way that I respond? So it's not really right or wrong. So yes. over the years, you know, we've got a number of teams that, you know, might need support for whatever reason, new members coming in or a bit of conflict. You know, we would decide out of our suite of tools, you know, which is the best one. Um, so I've obviously personally facilitated some of those workshops as others in my my team have but what we find really works whatever tool you use is the common language as you touched on so if you've got a team saying oh you're being very j today you know can we be a bit more p it just cuts the 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 room um, and cuts that tension which is fabulous and uh, the disc I do think is a little bit more um, you know more about your behavior and, and how that comes out so we generally use that for the higher levels so we've had our executive and our senior leaders um, undertake disc and it's a common language between us and it's also been really valuable for where are our gaps as an executive team do we have you know, the four quadrants covered or not, or, you know, I, I'm a D and sometimes feel a little bit out on my own sometimes. Um, and, and then others in teams where, you know, they're the minority, it really helps the rest of the team to say, hey, let's consider what the S's think or the C's think. Um, I'm, I'm talking uh, disc language, but yes. it, it's been really useful. And, you know, we, we, we bring these things in and out as we need them, but we have a few things that are a common language in our organisation. Which and if, if anybody's listening to this, we've got a whole episode on, on DISC. I'll put it, yeah. the number of it in the show notes so you can read up about it because I, I'm a great believer in uh, it's not about labelling people. It's just understanding, look, we've yeah. gone in and we've done uh, a DISC profile for for an entire team and found that there was uh, it was uh, overbearingly in one direction yeah. and so, uh, another style was completely absent and yes. that's that's lack of diversity and that's not a good thing. So Absolutely. it's good to have diversity. Look, we're coming to the end of our time, Amanda. So uh, it's just so exciting to get a, a snapshot of what attracts a Best in HR award. So congratulations. Thank and you. it sounds <laughs> like I'm hearing that you're going way beyond the, the fact that you're a high div, which is direct, which is about <laughs> results, because you're also got a very strong people uh interpersonal uh, uh, expression uh, and taking uh, on board the fact that people matter, that you care for people and that you listen. So um, just just you wouldn't have collaboration if uh, if you didn't have all those other elements in place. Amanda, our time is coming to a close. It's been very generous of you to uh, go uh, go in depth and tell us a little bit about all the initiatives that you've uh, bring, brought into uh, Redland City Council. Thank you for your time today. Oh, thank you, Nina. It's been wonderful and um, always happy to, to be involved in, in making, you know, peop the people and culture field, you know, the, the best it can be and work with wonderful people such as yourself. So thank you for the opportunity. My pleasure. And uh, it's it, that is definitely one of the threads you're your whole push is to help people be the best they can be. So uh, congratulations to you. Oh, thank you, Nina. <laughs> this episode, we've been speaking with Amanda Daly on the Manage Self, Lead Others podcast for people managers. I'm your host, Nina Sunday. And if you like this podcast, uh, where, where it's possible, give it a rating and a review. And remember to subscribe. Uh, you can subscribe to the, the video version on the LinkedIn channel so you catch the next episode. And we have conversations with people who share insights on how to elevate and transform team culture. I hope this inspires you to do the same. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Tell me you like the show. And uh, thank you for listening. Until next time, bye for now. Nina Sunday is on a mission to help leaders transform culture. To book Nina Sunday CSP to speak at your conference, visit ninasunday.com to request a proposal. Nina travels from Brisbane, Australia for in-person presentations Australia-wide. Twice certified virtual presenter, Nina Sunday presents virtually, globally, for any time zone.